Welcome to another episode of The Holy Hour. This is Gavin, and uh, thanks for joining me. I'm sitting here in this dark, dark room all alone. Yes, I'm on my own on this one. Um, But fear not, this could be very educational, maybe entertaining, and either way, we'll get to talk some cure. So uh, lend me your ears as I take you on another journey through one of my amazing playlists, like an earlier episode I would like to play for you my favorite Cure cover songs. People covering Cure covers. No, people covering the Cure as their cover. So yeah, no actual Cure on these snippets, but they're playing Cure songs. There's not that many great Cure covers out there, strangely enough. A band that's been around almost 40 years and has so many great singles and deep cuts, you would think... People would be covering this stuff left and right, but not the case so much, in my humble opinion. Um, And I think as we touched in other episodes, just the art of a cover in general is very tough. I feel like uh, you have to cut a balance, you know? There's this amazing song at the core of it, and you have a band, you want to pay respects to that song, so you, you play it in the fashion of that song. But at the same time, on the other end, you gotta put your own stamp on it somehow make it your own and add your own little spice and flavor to it um that makes a great cover if you cover it exactly as the other band did it doesn't really matter how good of a band you are you know you're kind of just playing it i'm sure it's fun for bands to play a song and just play it at their live set that's why live sets tend to have covers but recording it you know it's kind of taking it to that next level where you're like okay i'm doing something different to this song or it should be anyway um you know or their heart they feel like it's worthy of recording hopefully um but it's tough i mean i've definitely discovered so many bands based on a cool cover of something i'm like oh who wrote that that's a great song and then you track it down then you end up loving that band um so to me i feel like what happens in that example is that you like that artist initially, uh, so they had enough of their own stamp on it to reel you in, but then the song sounded enough like it where you're like, oh yeah, and then you listen to the original and you either like it even more, or you know, you just kind of appreciate the cool songwriting side of it, and then you dive into their world too. And so that's the ideal situation, but a lot of times, you know, like I said, some bands just cover it, and it just sounds like a band playing the other band song, or even worse, when they put too much of their own twist on it and they basically rewrite the whole song i mean there's definitely examples of that being cool but when you like it you tend to like the new version of that song and not so much because it is different from whatever it you know was mutated from um that's a dangerous category i think when you get into like just rewriting a whole song unless you know you really got some kind of vision you're doing for it But as for this matter at hand, the playlist that I've compiled for you guys, most of them are taken from, um, well, this one uh, tribute album. There haven't even been that many compilations or tribute albums, but the majority are taken from one that came out in 2008 that I feel like is really good called Perfect as Cats. And um, most of the artists on it are fairly unknowns. Um, Dandy Warhols and Bat for Lashes, I feel like, are probably the bigger names on it. Um, But otherwise, you know, they're probably just indie level bands. Uh, So somebody hipper to the scene might already have known a lot of these bands, but I hadn't going into it. And I thought that was kind of cool just uh, seeing. And they're packed full too, like two discs worth. Um, 
and uh, 17 songs, 16 tracks maybe on, on both discs. So there's a lot, and there's definitely some terrible ones on there, but some are, you know, more experimental, and some are stick to the more traditional approach. But there's a little everything, and they just do a really good job with it. Uh, the song selection in, the, in themselves is really good. There's a lot of, like, B-sides and just kind of cooler cure songs that don't really get the attention so much, so it's not just, like, love song and just, like, having getting, you know, covered. So a lot of them come from that. Um, there's also a tribute album that came out within the same year, I believe, um, from American Laundry Mat Records um, called Just Like Heaven. Um, and that one tends to be a little more of the obvious ones covered. And even has a few bigger names like the Brunettes and Dean and, Brit- Dean and Britta, uh, Submarines, Elk City, Rosebuds, uh, The Wedding Present. So... Um, Black Francis is on there. So definitely some some bigger names, but I don't really feel like a lot of those really found that balance quite as well. They're they're cool and they're not bad by any means. Um but but yeah, so I recommend definitely checking those out in their entirety. Uh if you aren't familiar with those yet as far as cure covers, just because it's neat to hear. But to the matter at hand, let's just dive into this immaculate playlist here that I've compiled. And uh, they're in no particular order. They just sound good as a mix this way. But the first one is from that Perfect is Cats compilation. And uh, it's X Reverie and kicking it off with Hanging Garden. And they keep it very minimal, um, like like the actual song. It's crazy. Um, even on pornography, there's some cool production stuff going on that kind of hides the fact that it's just a really cool bass line with like some cool drums and that one little guitar riff over it there really isn't much to that song and when you see them playing it live from that era uh it's it's quite amazing what a cool song that is just based on that bass line and the drums and this cover of it i feel like still stuck with that they fuzzed out the bass a little bit and um made it sound a little bit more modern which we'll see in a lot of these um but yeah, and the the female vocals I'm not crazy about. Um, there's something kind of medieval Renaissance fairy about their vocals, if that makes any sense. But um, it works for this. I did track down some other songs by this band. I wasn't totally blown away by them. They weren't horrible by any means. But uh, um, I thought I might like them more just based on how good this cover is. But um, yeah, just just how cool the parts of this song is and really showcases that. So uh, let's hear a little snippet of The Hanging Garden by X Reverie. see what I mean pretty cool Um, this next one is Sugar Girl a b-side from the Kiss Me era which a song I'm very fond of I've mentioned it in an episode that hasn't aired yet as of now uh, the b-sides episode Um, but yeah I love this song so much and has so many cool parts my only gripe would be that there's so many like instrument sound choices there's a lot of like synth flutes and stuff and it's always been a goal of mine to record it somehow just for my own state of mind with like guitars and pianos and stuff just more organic instruments and they kind of do that on this cover this is uh again from the perfect is cats um compilation and um it's from a band called buddy i don't know if the singer is just called buddy but the band slash singer is called buddy and um i've heard a few of their other stuff they're a good band um and uh, they do a good song with Sugar Girl, and just the fact that they chose it or were given Sugar Girl is pretty cool in itself. Um, I don't know. And they kind of do that. They still use some of the synth flute, but it's a bit more modernized sounding, and uh, there's definitely more guitars in it and such, and it's, it's a cool song. So here's Sugar Girl by Buddy, and a uh, big thumbs up for this one. Good job, guys. Thank you. 
Wish I could find it funny You laughing like that Instead I change into a rage Run around without a face Wish I could find it funny When you never come back Don't suppose I'll ever know How to keep you Goodbye, sugar girl So here's an interesting one. Um, coming up next is Tuscadero doing Boys Don't Cry. Um, first off, this comes off of another tribute album that I didn't mention earlier called Give Me the Cure. came out in about 95. Um, it was a Washington, D.C. area tribute um, for AIDS research. And um, it's a weird one because it was a lot of the bands that we saw as opening acts and just sporadically shows when we'd go to up in dc at the black cat or 930 club so we we're familiar with some of the artists but um most of them are terrible in this compilation there's some really bad ones in the sense that i didn't even feel like they really liked the cure or somehow just wanted to be on this compilation you know i'm probably wrong in that i'm assuming people wouldn't just record a song for a tribute album if they didn't like the band or love the band but um, maybe that's the case because some of them just sound like they just don't even know the song, the phrasing of the lyrics and stuff. And um, there's one in particular, Dismemberment Plan, which has always been a weird band because we saw them opening, I believe, for Velocity Girl um, and maybe a couple other times. And they got pretty, they're a huge band in the DC area and indie scene elsewhere, even. People love them, but like, I thought they were terrible when I saw them. <laughs> And uh, this version of Close to Me that's on this is so bad where they do what I was talking about earlier where they just rewrote it in such a ridiculous way where like none of the hooks are in there. The song just flounders and it's so bad. But, um, you know, I'm sure there's tons of Dismemberment Plan fans out there that'd be like, what are you talking about? They're amazing. But I don't know. I wasn't impressed when I saw them live. Can't really remember why a lot of these bands were just in what we called at the time opening band sound because they did just we would go and see bands and they would just come out and I guess the signature description of an opening band sound was just the songs were just like kind of overly long rocking out almost like a rock out form of a jam band where the songs just go nowhere and take forever and they just weren't particularly catchy at all. And, uh, you know, just super self-indulgent rock, you know? But um, not that Dismemberment Plan would totally fall into that category, probably. But I need to go back and try to listen to more of their stuff and see. But I remember people loved them, and they are horrible on this tribute, though. That was, like, still one of the worst covers I've ever heard is their version of Close to Me. But that is not the one that, that I'm putting on the list here. The one I am putting on the list is um, Tuscadero. Another huge DC local scene band. It's hard to tell how well known they would be anybody outside of that area in that time frame. But they're a cool band. They were like pretty much the earliest and maybe even only case of when you'd go to see a band, especially as a kid, and there's an opening act and somebody came out and just blew you away and they were really great and became a band that you loved and you bought everything they loved and just totally by chance you know had no idea that they were even playing and just came out how rare that is sadly you know you'd think the opening act would be you know 50 50 chance of winning you over but it's so rare that you really fall in love with a band just by seeing them open for somebody and um Tuscadero totally did it they hooked us um they were just a cool 90s rock band um kind of a dual female front lady vocalist going uh, Margaret and Melissa were their names and we just thought they were the, the coolest they put out a great album called the pink album on teen beat records and uh, it got picked up by Electra eventually um, and strangely enough with the cure and um, and they 
re-recorded that and then put out like an album just for Electra that didn't do too well. They got kicked off the label and then the whole end of the 90s debacle, I think, and they just kind of fell apart at that point, went on to do smaller stuff on their own. But that was just this great era of them opening for like Velocity Girls when we saw them and such a cool band. And um, so it's hard to say with this version of Boys Don't Cry that was from this compilation um, if it's really that great of a cover or not, or maybe just my sentimental attachment to this band. Um, but I feel like they did a great job with doing a song like Boys Don't Cry, which is a huge one to tackle. But um, it's, you know, they do a great job. They do a little slight twist of the melody on the chorus of Boys Don't Cry, singing it wise, um, which is cool enough to put their own little stamp on it. But at the same time, it just sounds like a cool 90s rock version of Boys Don't Cry. So here's what. You know, let me know what you think. Here you go. Tuscadero, boys don't cry. Go, Tuscadero making DC proud. Uh, speaking of close to me, not to keep dwelling on how terrible Dismemberment Plan's version of Close to Me was on that compilation, I did find a good cover of Close to Me um, on that Perfect is Cats compilation, and that'll be the next one I'd like to play for you. It's a weird song. Close to Me is a tough one, I think, for people to cover. Um, I don't think I've I've heard multiple terrible covers of this one, and that one in particular always seems like a really hard one for for bands to cover. I don't know what it is, maybe just because it's so uniquely a Robert Smith kind of vocal, and um, the song in itself is just like, you know, very dainty kind of little melodies interwoven together to make a a very Cure-esque song that when other people do it, it just doesn't translate. But I found one. Here it is, Khaki King, doing Close to Me. Um, I'm going to follow it up, too, with a kind of an honorable mention close to me cover. Um, Lady Sovereign did one where she basically sampled it, so it's not even really a cover. Um, But, yeah, it's just so weird to hear the cure in that kind of format, but it kind of works, I feel like. I'm not a very big fan of her other stuff so much, but it's kind of quirky and it is what it is kind of thing. But um, she did this kind of close to me cover sample type deal where she sings parts of it but the music's the same through it so um i'm gonna kind of hit you with a double whammy here of some snippets of first khaki king doing it um is more of a traditional cover and old lady sovereign's like whatever puff daddy style sampling slash cover so there you go close to me <laughs> This day would end I never thought tonight Could ever be It's close to me So that's the double whammy close to me 
cover combo. Um, next one coming up is Exploding Boy by Lemon Sun. Again from the Perfect is Cat's compilation tribute. Um, this is a cool one where not only is it just an amazing song that I feel like needed to be covered and have a little bit more justice done to it, um, just a great Cure B-side in general, um, but this band Lemon Sun, I've listened to a few of their other songs that are pretty good, but this this take in particular is really good. Um, the vocals are really cool. They replace the sax, which is the only negative to Exploding Boy. I think anybody could throw on it with like a guitar, and that's always a good good thing. Um, but they actually wrote like extra lyrics too for a, a verse. I don't know if they're reaching deeper than I even know about, where there was like a, a demo that had extra cure vocals but um there's like a because it does just repeat basically um on the b-side that was released but uh they actually wrote another verse for it which is just kind of a quick nonsense verse or whatever but wow that's pretty ballsy right you cover cover like this amazing band and uh then you rewrite part of the song so uh so all the power to them for even trying that and pulling it off as far as i'm concerned if anybody was going to be picky and overly sensitive i would think it would be me on this song but you know pretty cool it's a good cover so here you go exploding boy lemon sun well done lads one to follow it up i felt like a good choice is a uh, one kind of in the same vein in the sense that it's just a cool cover there's not really all that much to say about it but um i feel like they did a great job and it's a nice rare cure song um is veil veil vanish doing upstairs room again from the perfect is cats compilation um this is just another cool band sound i like the vocals the guy has a cool kind of shout out louds vocal style and um the guitars swapped out some of the keys make it less uh you know upstairs room was a b-side or part of japanese whispers you know that whole kind of overly synthy era of the cure so it's cool to hear like a rock version of that song even though it still sounds you know very synth heavy but um yeah, they did a great job with it. I think it just makes it, you know, gives it enough of their own signature sound and at the same time just showcases what a cool written song that is and those extra little guitar parts. And it works good, so I'll just uh, play it for you and let you decide because I'm, I'm sold. Here you go, Upstairs Room, Veil Veil Vanish. I hate to follow it with another Perfect is Cat song, but I'm telling you, this uh, tribute compilation is the way to go. Um, love song. What? The Cure's biggest song ever. Yeah. So I'm taking Marie Sue's version over all the other love song covers out there, which is a bit of a bull move that I know that 90% of people probably wouldn't agree with. But this is probably the most widely covered Cure song um, because it's probably their biggest hit, right? So um, it makes sense. But at the same time, yeah, I feel like she, on this version, kind of does it more folky. I saw her play live here in Asheville, too, at this like super small um, bar, basically. So this is a small, not widely known artist, but I feel like she really kind of just added this cool folky vibe to it without not overdoing it but at the same time playing a, a cool rendition of the song um of course other people have covered this adele the widely known artist adele 
uh, on her, I don't know if it was the first album or whatever that huge one was that, um, uh, I think they're all huge, but anyway, um, it was kind of cool. I like her version too. It was like, uh, more just kind of a mainstream pop way. She did a good version of it. Made me like her a little bit more when I saw that I was on there, but, um, yeah, I didn't really feel like it really did anything. And Death Cat for Cutie covered this song. Um, but it just sounded like Death Cat for Cutie playing Love Song. Cool. They did a good job. It sounded all right. But, you know, it's just, I don't know. Something about this one. Oh, I've, I found a clip, too, of Imagine Dragons. I hear they're a real big band right now. I'm not really familiar with any of their stuff. But, um, so, yeah, a lot of people out there, probably people would, would, would want to swap this one out on their playlist with one of these widely known huge billion album recording artist sells whatever but um i don't think any of those words are in the right order but um you get what i mean love song marie sue here you go i'm going with her fuck you imagine dragons whenever i'm alone I'm stepping away from the damn Perfect is Cats compilation for this one. This is an old one that probably every Cure fan should be familiar with, but uh, it has to be on here. So Dinosaur Jr. doing Just Like Heaven. I'll take their version over every other billion covers of Just Like Heaven. It's it's awesome. You know, if I remember hearing this as a kid um, before I really caught on to what Dinosaur Jr. was all about, and I was offended. I remember being just a, a huge Cure fan and hearing this. I'm not quite sure where it matches up years-wise, but um, like just being like, what? They're not taking this serious. They're shouting on the chorus, and you know, I thought they were just goofing around, making fun of the Cure or something. But um, once you kind of really get Dinosaur Jr., then it makes you realize that this is an awesome cover and it sounds great. The choruses I could still probably do without, without the, yo, so that's a little, a little goofy, but at the same time it, it works in such a nineties dinosaur junior rock way. And the way that he handles the guitar solo, of course, Jay Maskus is just shreds and makes it sound so cool. Um, so yeah, I think it works great. It's still early phase dinosaur junior T where you really get that bare bones, Dinosaur Junior sound, and it works great. Um, the abrupt ending is really weird. I don't know if there's a story behind that. It sounds very reminiscent. I know with like Paul Westerberg stereo album, there's a lot of quick ends, but and he just said that it was because his tape ran out recording it, which makes a lot of sense. So I don't know if something like that happened or if they just thought it was cool to cut it. But that's kind of a weird abrupt ending. But um, yeah, Dinosaur Junior, just like heaven, can't go wrong with that one. There it is. Are you doing good? Do you need a break? Do you need to uh, splash a little red wine on your face? All right. Take a sip. You got this. All right. Next one, 17 Seconds by Cowboy Junkie. So fairly, I don't even want to say recent. It's probably been a while now, but I feel like I stumbled across this as some kind of B-side bonus track or something. I don't even remember. I don't know if it's officially on a Cowboy Junkies album, but... um. And they're a weird band. I've always liked them. I've never been a huge fan, but it's a very distinct sound, Cowboy Junkies, if you're not um, familiar with them. But some songs you just love. They sound so good. And um, this is a cool cover. 
and a lot of it I think is just the fact that they're covering 17 seconds the song is so weird where it's like wow that's that's a song you don't hear covered very often the cure doesn't even play that song very often anymore um so yeah that's just cool definitely points for just picking a, a more obscure cure song and um wow do they nail it too like another character trait of cowboy junkies that they will bring down a room they are pretty depressing and if nothing else they should win some kind of award from perhaps dare i say out depressing the cure on this song even they make it very down and low but it it works um and i love margo's vocals she she makes it sound great the only negative i feel like is there's a lead guitar part it's just kind of like, I don't know, it doesn't quite, he's kind of rocking out in like a cool artsy way, but it just doesn't really fit the song or the cure sound. So it's just that, again, that teetering a little bit too far in the, what the fuck is this guy doing? Why is he doing that? But um, I don't know, it's not enough to ruin it by any means. It's on the playlist and uh, I don't know. Let's, let's hear it. Hear what you think. 17 seconds. Cowboy Junkies. So here's the next one. Rosebud's doing The Walk. This one's uh, from the Just Like Heaven American Laundry Mats tribute that I talked about at the top of this episode. Maybe the only one. I'm not quite sure, glancing at the list. But um, yeah, this is a weird one. The Walk might be up there with Close to Me. That's a tough song to cover. It's such a unique, cure kind of song that anybody that plays it is going to totally just run the risk of sounding like you're just playing a cure song. Um, or just making it stupid. Um, so I think they did a great job with it. A huge part again, maybe like the Tuscadero one, is just that I just happen to like Rosebuds a lot. If you're not familiar with them, I totally recommend checking out their actual albums. They write some great songs and a uh, cool live band. So I think it, it helps just knowing that they're just a solid band and you know they're playing a cool version of The Walk. Um, so yeah, it, it's a lot to do with it so here it is rosebuds doing the walk Okay, so we're following this one kind of in the same vein. Uh, this is, uh, as far as cure timelines of things, this is super new and uh, makes the cut as far as I'm concerned. But Yola Tango, great band, been around forever. Um, you probably should just know them anyway. Uh, but it's kind of in the vein of that Rosebuds one where it's just, it helps to not really uh, make this dynamic cover thing theory work if it's just a good band you know so they're playing a version of friday i'm in love that just came out fairly recently on their newest album and um i love it i think it sounds really good they do like a good um just kind of stripped down female vocals again um just kind of mellow a lot of the guitar parts are slightly rearranged um but they sound confident and cool like they just wanted to do it in this style and it works out good. It has a great music video, too, so check that out if you haven't yet. But uh, Yolo Tango doing Friday I'm in Love, which is, again, you know, another huge Cure hit. So it's easy to do that one and just mimic the band or try to do something really stupid with it. I've heard, like, other folky versions that are pretty decent. Um, but this is cool because it's still, like, a full kind of band but 
kept it kind of acoustic-y and just chill. And her vocals are very, you know, not r- amazing, but at the same time, cool in that indie rock way that Yola Tango nails. So if you're familiar with them, then you know exactly what I'm getting at. So here you go. Friday I'm in Love, Yola Tango. Good on you, kids. I don't care if Monday's blue, Tuesday's gray, and Wednesday too. Thursday, I don't care about you. It's Friday, I'm in love. Monday, you can fall apart. Tuesday, Wednesday, break my heart. Thursday doesn't even start. It's Friday, I'm in love. Saturday, wait. Sunday always comes too late. Okay, we've been away from the Perfect is Cats compilation long enough. Let's get back for one more. This is uh, Muslims coming up next with Grinding Halt, which if you know me, know that I'm a fan of this song. Um, From Three Three Imaginary Boys, Grinding Halt, it's just one of those songs you can't listen to enough. Such a cool bass line, so simple, so catchy, so fun, so cool, so rocking. Basically... It adapts to you, and uh, it's a great song, and it's great to hear like an indie rock band kind of embrace it and modernize it, I think. Um, I think I've said on a few other songs, but it's just so cool to hear, you know, kind of embrace it with more kind of rock and guitar sounds of today, and um, you know, there's not really that much to say other than it's just like a cool band, you know, from what I've heard. I feel like I've, I've tracked down a few of their other songs, and this band, The Muslims, had some cool songs. So they might be a force to be reckoned with soon. Grinding halt, the Muslims. Stop. Alright, so we're winding down. We just got a couple left here. Thanks for hanging with me. Hopefully you're learning so much and just blowing tons of money on iTunes as we speak. Um, but uh, Or wherever you buy your digital music from. Maybe just ordered the whole damn compilation at this point of Perfect as Cats. That'd be cool too and understandable. But um, this one comes from that old DC tribute that I was talking trash about. Uh, this is a band called Chisel. And um, they do a cover of six different ways that was really good on that one. Uh, it's definitely a more guitar versus piano version of this song. Um, and the vocals I'm 50-50 on. He's kind of doing like this maybe oasis style, even though I don't think he's British. <laughs> like uh, just kind of whiny you know, vocals, but it works cool for the song. And I feel like it's a good, good uh, twist on... And an otherwise awesome Cure song. Um, on the Perfect is Cats compilation, there is a, a really good cover, too, of Six Different Ways by um, Rainbow Arabia, who I've listened to a few of their other originals. who's a good band, too. So um, you might want to check that one out, too. But just for the sake of variety, I went with the Chisel one uh, from this DC compilation called Gimme the Cure. Um so here's Chisel doing six different ways. Oh, quick Chisel story, too. I saw them open for somebody at 930 Club way back when up in the D.C. area. And um, the only band I've ever seen live were halfway through a song. The guy's SG guitar is Gibson SG, just totally the neck detached. and just like, It wasn't even like a break. It, was like, it just totally popped out, like mid-song. It was just like, <laughs> like the whole neck of the guitar just popped off. And it was like, I mean, like a gasp almost. Maybe that's just how I remembered it from the entire audience. It was like, <gasps> like, I think the rest of the band just kept playing. So there probably wasn't really like that whole moment of like, oh, but like, it just felt that way. Like, oh my God, like so sad. And then you could just see in the guy, the poor dude's eyes, like the whole rest of the set, he's just like, my guitar, you know, they had like a backup and they just swapped it out real quick and he carried on with the set. But 
he just didn't seem to recover from it as naturally he shouldn't, you know, but it was just like, Oh my God. Like it was like a full on real SG too. So it wasn't some piece of crap Epiphone or something, but man, I've never seen that. It's always terrified me too. Like if I'm playing a show with an SG and it's just like, uh, what happened? What did he do? Like, why would that happen? But, um, yeah. So I always think of that when I think of chisel in six different ways even though they weren't playing six different ways when it happened. But there you go. So alas, my dear friends, we have reached track 14, the final song on my playlist of covers. And uh, this honor goes to the band Ivy, um, female vocalist from the early 2000s. Uh, part of the band was side project of Adam Schlesinger from Fountains of Wayne and co-wrote the title track from the hit film That Thing You Do, starring Tom Hanks. So pop genius all through and through. They have a couple of really good albums of originals too that you should check out. But they put out one album in particular that was an all-covers album um, called Guest Room. And it's really good. Uh, Aside from kicking it off with Let's Go to Bed cover, there's some other really cool kind of semi-rare albums. It's nice when a cover album doesn't have, you know, just obvious cool songs on it and stuff you can kind of dig around on. There's like a Papa's Frida's cover and go-betweens and such. So, um, yeah, it's a cool, uh, the house of love. There's just like a bunch of weird, cool covers on there, but they kick it off with let's go to bed. And it's, again, it's not an easy song to cover. It's kind of like the walk and close to me. Um, but they pull it off on this one where they kind of make it sound a bit more modernized. And I think the female vocals are a huge part of, Um, a good way to cut the balance of what I've been talking about through and through on this, of just making it sound slightly different than the actual Cure song, while at the same time, you know, sticking to the traditional format of it. And, um, you know, Robert sings so high, too, so it makes sense that more more, uh, female vocals would work on covers. So here it is. Let's go to bed. Thanks so much for this podcast. I'll I'll rock you out on this one and um, just... Say all my goodbyes now, too. Uh, We'll get back to more traditional interview format for other episodes here. So uh, if this bored you out of your mind and you didn't find any of these songs appealing, apologies, and we'll be back on track here shortly. But thanks for uh, listening, and I hope you learned a little something or heard some band or some version of a band that you were curious about. Um, As always, subscribe on iTunes. and check us out on Instagram at the Holy Hour Podcast, where you can get, you know, just some some cure pictures and updates of new episodes and such. Um, I also want to throw it out there that if you want to record your own version of the Holy Hour, just stories of you talking to a friend or by yourself about how you got into the cure or a cure related story, we're so into that, you know? Um, so I don't get to really say that much on interview episodes cause we're busy talking, but, um, yeah, record yourself talking about the cure, about anything related to the cure and, uh, email it to me, Gavin at Gavin Connor. That's G A V I N C O N N E R at gmail.com. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll post it as an episode. It would be great just to have people's uh, conversations about the cure. It doesn't have to be me and Donald or me and anyone. And, um, yeah, so until then, subscribe and leave some comments, especially on this episode. I would love other uh, video clips or just suggestions of ones that you think are, are should have been on this playlist. I'm sure I'm missing tons. So many people cover the cure. There's bound to be some great ones out there. So um, I'd love to hear your opinions. Uh, Leave them in the comments on iTunes. I heard that that helps the ratings. So please come leave a comment, rate us. Uh, If you want it to be more personalized, just email me at gavinconner at gmail.com and then I'll uh, check it out. So thanks so much. Here's Ivy with Let's Go to Bed and wise words from Robert Smith. It's late. 
There's so much red wine in all of us right now. Let's call it a night after this snippet and go to bed. Good night. And uh, in the great words of Christian Slater, talk hard.